Kia ora everyone. Uh, my name is Matt. Uh, I'm a local here in Rotorua. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. We've only got 15 minutes, so I've got to be quick. So if you can't understand me because I'm mumbling, put your hand up because I'll slow down. Uh, I want to introduce you to our team. Uh, this is our Shake Up team. Uh, Sophie Leopard uh, we used to be the manager of the Youth Centre here in Rotorua. Uh, Dee Pascoe set up Third Place Cafe. Uh, Mike Coates is a church minister. Kitty Thomas is an administrator, but involved with lots of local um, boards and little community groups. And then I am someone with a background in IT, set up um, a Round Town app. If you want to know what's happening in Rotorua, check out Around Town. We have over 300 things that are events and concerts and other things. Um, uh, so I want to talk to you about a guy called Hazard. It's not his real name, but it's not far from the truth. Uh, Hazard grew up in a really destructive family, but he's really, really smart. But he didn't fit in with the school system. So a lot of people were telling him that he wasn't smart. They were telling him that he couldn't do school. And he just uh, lashed out, basically. He was the, the class clown. He provoked um, trouble. And so he actually left school really early. But he's really smart. And he came to me one day and said, Matt, I would like to get a job. I was like, great, this is awesome. Let's go get you a job. It shouldn't be that hard. I know that you don't have education, but you're really smart. Like I've seen it in him that he's got the ability to learn. He's a really hard worker. I thought this would be, this would be great. So we went off to different places and I said, the first place we went to was a supermarket. And I said, walk up to them and just say that you'd like a job. Or I asked them if they have a job. And he just walked up from miles away, yelled out, stop, you've got a job. And I like sort of laughed and smiled thinking, is this serious or not? And uh, they realized that he was being serious and he said, uh, sorry, we don't have anything at the moment, but if you drop in your CV, uh, we'll get back to you when we have something that um, pops up. He turned around, yelled back to me at the, at the back door and said, Matt, what's a CV? <laughs> and I was like, oh man, okay, we've got some work to do here, you know. So we went to the next place, went to a few different places and everyone said the same thing, drop in your CV, we'll get back to you when we have something that's available. We went to look at a CV and he just didn't have anything, right? Like, he hadn't been involved in a school, anything like with school. He hadn't been involved in sports teams. He didn't have education. But I knew that he was really smart and I was willing to vouch for him. So we went to the next, next place and I said, look, what have you, what, what's your most favorite thing in school? And he said it was um, the trade class with like cars and mechanic stuff. I said, let's go to mechanic and just say, can we get some work experience for something for the CV? Yeah, let's get started at least. Let's get this rolling. If you get paid, that's great. If you don't, that's not a big deal at the moment. We just need to get something, get some traction, get some runs on the board. So we went to a place and I said, hello, my name's Matt, uh, this is Hazard. Uh, Hazard's looking for some work experience. He doesn't need much, he just needs some hours to get started. Um, doesn't matter if it's a couple of hours, if it's a couple of days a week, uh, can you please just take him, I'm vouching for him basically. You know? And I said, sorry, we, we don't have the capacity at the moment, but if you keep trying other places here on, I'm sure there'll be other mechanics will give you a chance. Next place, Hazard says, I wanna do it. I was like, wait, I've only done one, I've only introduced you to one place. He walked in and said, hello, my name's Hazard. I'm looking for part-time work. It doesn't matter if it's a couple of hours or a couple of days a week. I just want some work experience. I'm like, this guy, you know, it just changes how you see things. Is when, if you write off young people, often they will live down in low expectations. But if you, if you vouch for them and give them the belief that they have inside them, they can do a lot, you know. So I kept saying to multiple places, can you please hire him? Can you please hire him? He would go to places, can you please hire me? And the thing is, a lot, of, a lot of workplaces were saying, um, we, we won't hire young people unless they have experience. I keep saying, but how are they going to get the experience? I mean, this is such a hard road for most young people, let alone people who are really struggling to find work. Talking to Wins here locally, we've got 800 young people between 18 and 25 who are on the benefit. 800 young people who don't have a job. I thought, this is incredible. You know, so what are we going to do about this if we're constantly kind of waiting for them to get experience or waiting to do other things. So I said, look, we've got to do something. And what I noticed was, so I worked up at the at Tamaha o Parakarangi, which is the youth justice residence. And those are roughly 13 to 16 year olds, they're all 16 and under, of young people who have done um, offences that have been deemed too serious, they've been put away into the youth justice residence. And what you realise is that they're all teenagers, right? And at first, when I first walked in, they were really hard, their hearts were like really staunch towards me. But you realize deep down, they're all looking for affirmation, they're looking for acceptance, they're looking for belonging. And a lot of them just haven't had people who have believed in them or given them support. So I'm really 
chomping on the bit and saying, let's do something. We can't have 800 young people wandering around the streets without us looking after them and taking care of them. Um, what we found is that 99% of youth offenders have no positive male role models in their life. And that's, I mean, when you talk to people who are involved in social services, they say, yeah, it's not really a surprise. But the fascinating one for me is 100% of them don't do any physical activity or organized sport. And I find that really fascinating because I grew up playing sport. You know, you meet other people, you do something positive, you might get competitive and a bit feisty, but you learn that at the end of the day it doesn't matter and you, you drop whatever tension was on the field and you learn to get along with people. You think about a young person, a male, my, my instance was Hazard, he's got so much energy. I think he's got ADHD because he's got so much energy, he's willing to do all these things and he hasn't got anything for work. So he's sitting at home with all this energy pent up and all of a sudden these gang kids came along and said, hey, do you want to come along? We're going to go and break into this house. Oh yeah, that sounds like a good idea. A week later, he's like, oh man, I did something really dumb. I'm like, you, you need to channel this energy, you know? And so when we find him work experience, it's great, you know, because he just loves getting involved with things. He loves um, having the purpose. He loves having positive people saying, you're doing a great thing. You're doing really well, you know, because he's got so much ability. So we are setting up. Um, oh, okay, sorry. One more thing. I got inspired, similar um, to you before, Janine, about um, books. For me, it was Muhammad Yunus. Uh, Muhammad Yunus is the godfather for me of social enterprise. Um, he set up the Grameen Bank, which is a microfinance institution in Bangladesh. Um, and he won the 2005 uh, Nobel Peace Prize. And he said, look, I mean, it's already come up similar with the two talks before this morning. But uh, he said that a lot of charities will do really good work or not-for-profits will do really good work, but as soon as the funding doesn't come in, that work often dries up. And he said, but businesses will do things for money. He said, where's that balance? And that's where I really believe social enterprise can play a huge role, because it's doing stuff that not-for-profits really care about and gaps that capitalism has created, but it's doing, so, doing it in a way that is sustainable. Because we as people have a decision to, to support what we want. So if we put our money towards things like Brown Owl, for instance, we're saying we believe in this and we support this and it allows it to be sustainable while still not aiming for profit, aims to do something good for the community. Um, and I guess I'm a bit of a purist in that way. I feel like there are certain organisations that do um, raising money, but then they give that profit away to a charity. And I don't really feel like that's a social enterprise. I feel like the social enterprise must keep the profit inside themselves, inside the organization to keep them sustainable and any profit goes on to sustain them and to or, or grow the enterprise. Um, so what we've done is we've bought a caravan, we've stripped it right back, right to the very core of its being um, and we're setting up a food caravan and um, we're launching this summer. We've had so many different hands um, pitching in to make this thing get to where it is at the moment. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be selling smoothies, soups and coffee. Um, really really easy to do, like why we made that decision is because smoothies and soups are really easy for any young person to get in without, with very little training, right? You chop, you blend, you put into a pot. It's quite good for us. Um, but then it allows development to other things like customer service, to cash handling, and coffee is quite um, a skill. So it allows us to have development in the caravan so that a, if an employer comes to us and says, hey, what has this young person learnt? We've got a whole range of things that they've developed while being in a positive work environment for them to learn good skills. Um, the other thing is uh, what we have seen is that a lot of young people have tried to get into work and they find it really difficult because they feel like they can't do it. They have been told negative things about themselves. So chopping and blending is a good way to get started just to get an entry level in and then we get, allow them to have positive mentoring through that stage in the caravan. Um, and we also have learned this stat that if someone's in employment for 12 months there's a 90% chance of them staying off the benefit for life. I mean that's amazing. Why aren't we doing more of this, you know? So um, I feel a little bit gutted that our caravan is so small <laughs> because we'll only take a couple of people at, a, at one time. Um, but what we really want to do is take young people, mentor them, and then pass them on to employment so it's not the end of the road. It's the start for them. Start of building positive foundations and a good platform for their employment history. Um, there are a lot of people who have pitched in to make this work and a lot of people who have... Um, got on board with the vision and we're really, really grateful for that and grateful for organisations doing things like this to kind of get people talking and get people on the same page of what's happening in Rotorua. Um, this is not us, but this is kind of where we're heading with our caravan to make it nice and light and bright and clean. 
Um, when we go to markets, like you go to the Thursday night market or Saturday market in our Sunday market, uh, you'll see that there are, there are a lot of different options, which is great. But if you go to things like sporting events um, or soccer or down at a Puringa Park, there's often hot dogs, chips and coffee. You know, why can't we have good food for our people, you know? Why can't we have things that are good for our kids, good for our whanau? Why can't we say, let's have something positive here in the community that's not just doing good in the caravan, but also doing good for our people. Um, so, yeah, we've had really good feedback from people saying, we can't wait for you to be launching, we can't wait for you to be at our events, um, which is really cool to have that support. Um, so we're getting quite excited. We are just in the process of hiring. I can't say who they are at the moment, but um, we're really excited about the caliber of the person who's gonna be in the caravan to be the manager, because um, it's such a tricky role, right? They have to have a commercial backbone so that we're sustainable selling good, healthy food, but they also need to be good with young people to be, I don't know, tolerant and patient, while also being supportive and offering good hope. Um, so yeah, I mean, the night market have been really supportive of us, so hopefully look out for us there, but we'll also try and be at a few different places. Um, yeah. Uh, and also the other thing is we want to talk about light. Um, we'd love to be at night events that we can have light in our caravan and light um, as displays, because we believe in this as a metaphor for our young people, that they have so much light inside of them, but it's been kind of snuffed or hidden away, right? How can we allow them and their light to shine in our community? So, um, yeah, our name is Shake Up. Uh, we believe in shaking up the op options that exist for our young people right now in Rotorua. Um, and I just want to end on this quote here. Um, it's from Dame Fina Cooper. She said, take care of our children, take care of what they hear, take care of what they see, take care of what they feel. For how the children grow, so will be the shape of Aotearoa. Cool. Thank you very much. Snap, snap, 15 minutes. Now let's get meeting. <laughs> um, Any questions? Sorry, I should have asked. Any questions for Matt? What were you doing up at Father Kerrigan? Uh, I was running a social, social skills workshop once a week. Yeah. How did you get into that? Uh, I just went and talked to them. <laughs> but I feel like, uh, yeah, they do really good work, right? Uh, but they said that one of their biggest issues at the moment is options for young people to get into work. Right, so I went to them with this and said, look, this is what we're going to be doing. Can we work together? Can we partner? We've done that with a lot of different organizations saying, how can we all work together for the same thing? And they said, oh, can you come run a class every week? <laughs> so that's what I was doing, yeah. Yes, some people have been hearing about this story for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Good things take time. Yeah. Yeah. Jay's only gave me a short time, so I've got so much to say. Let's uh, just cover off a couple of things. One is... Uh, the <clears throat> generational thing and what, where people grow up and what they are surrounded by. Um, up at Te Maha Parakarangi, um, we, I did a little thing about the Charlie Schultz philosophy, which is the guy who wrote Peanuts, Snoopy. And um, sorry if you know this little anecdote of his, but he talked about um, their, uh, so name the, I can't even remember what the things are now, name the 10 most wealthy people in the world name the 10 last Academy Award winners, name the 10 um, World Series champions. Like he had these certain questions, right? And you go around the room and, and people can't really answer them. You know, you kind of go, oh, I kind of know who the t top 10 wealthy people are, but maybe I could name a couple of them. You know, maybe I could name uh, maybe a couple of Academy Award winners. And what it shows is that um, money, fame and fortune, you know, they're kind of, not actually things that we really care about, because if you ask people, name 10 people who have supported you or have been encouraging to you, or name people who have been like good teachers who have supported you and, and built it into you, or people who have supported you on your journey, basically, uh, people can name that really quickly, you know. Um, but the problem was that when I did that up at Te Maha, um, I dropped down to five, named five people who have supported you or built, up, built you up in your life and encouraged you, they couldn't name five. Right, and that was really heartbreaking for me because I thought, gosh, like I dropped that from 10 to 5 to give it a shot, you know, and <laughs> you know, I found it really, really heartbreaking. Yeah. And the second thing was, um, we sorry for talking so much, uh, but um, we're talking about the dairies, right? So I do IT work on Malfoy Road, and we have young people walking to intermediate school with 1.5 litre fizzy that they got from the dairy, 
And I just see it all around Rotorua at the moment. It's just so many young people walking with crap, you know, it's unbelievable. So we haven't got an agreement from the council yet, but we think that in the bylaws we can uh, drive our caravan around at the end of the day because we'll probably finish up around three o'clock-ish on a weekday. We want to drive around like Mr Whippy does and pull up somewhere and offer our, the excess of our food. So if we've made up a whole batch of smoothies, can we sell off the last parts as like $2 smoothies to our young people, you know? Any of our healthy food, can we offer out like even a dollar or something just to get it out there so that A, it's not free so the young people know that it does cost, but B, so that we're helping get our, our community feeding well, you know? So don't walk around with that crap. Anyway. It's to rock up to birthday parties and uh -huh. change the whole mindset that we have uh -huh. around giving junk food to our babies. So true. Go and just like make it a boutique caravan that mm. rocks up with your lights, dress up as a clown, I don't know. Hey, me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, have another option as well. Yeah. Why can't we have a Rotorua free, um, you know how they're doing the sugar tax? Mm. Why can't Rotorua say that we're going sugar-free drinks. Mm. Why can't we do all this change? And the aquatic centre has just yeah. done Go Kitty Falls store. Yeah, great stuff.